All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. So tonight we're talking about the Carolina Panthers. Now, before we get into the draft, I want to say, and I want to make this very clear. I love what Carolina is doing. I love the hiring of Dave Canales. I think Bryce Young has a very bright future in the NFL. Loved what they did on the offensive line. Loved the trade for Dante Johnson. And folks, if Bryce Young improves from last season, which is just at this point, it's going to happen. It's bound to happen. It's only a matter of time. Uh, we're going to get into why he struggled in just a second, but it doesn't take a rocket scientist. Uh, folks, the Carolina Panthers are ascending. And I'm not saying Carolina is going to be a 12 and 5 win team next season, but even like a 7 and 10 squad would be much improved from the 2 and 15 season last year. But they're building a new culture, they're orchestrating moves big time moves new gm dan morgan recently stating that he hopes to build this thing through the draft and hopes to capitalize on further opportunities to get playmakers i get it they don't have a first round pick but they have two second round picks they have seven total draft picks and folks at the end of the day it, all that matters is that bryce young is that dude we just need to see Bryce Young, it doesn't need to be for a 17-game full regular season performance, MVP, C.J. Stroud type of year, but we need to see improvements at a more consistent level, and we just we need to see a taste of what Bryce Young can offer the Carolina Panthers. And folks, um, I'm looking at this offensive line. I really like it. They reinforce their trenches with a pair of sturdy guards in Robert Hunt and Damian Lewis. Folks, Bryce Young last season league leading 62 sacks guys the second most in nfl history as a rookie what is he supposed to do what else is he supposed to do what else can he do if you're getting sacked 62 times over the course of a full regular season before we get any further into tonight's video if you guys enjoy it, be sure to hit that like button, hit that sub button for daily NFL content. Panthers fans, love you guys. If you guys want more videos, let me know down below. But if you wouldn't mind hitting that like button, let's try and get this video to 250 likes. Uh, folks, I just look at, you know, the whole era of the Carolina Panthers last season. And uh, once again, it just doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out what went wrong and why it went wrong. They're putting up less than 14 points per game. Obviously, Miles Sanders, their free agent acquisition at this time last year didn't pan out fully. Uh, but at the end of the day, Bryce Young had no help, practically no help outside of, uh, honestly, like not much. Like he pretty much had no help out there. Uh, Chubba Hubbard did a very good job, but like there was no offensive line. There were no consistent wide receiver threats to throw it to. And even, you know, when Mingo and, you know, Adam Thielen were doing their thing, uh, he got sacked 60 times. Like, it just, it's clear as day why they struggled. So you went out there and you picked up Damian Lewis for the left guard and you picked up Robert Hunt for the right guard. They're probably going to continue to bolster. I've seen a bunch of mock drafts where they're taking a center like Zach Frazier in the second round. Uh, but guys, their offense is going to be so much more improved especially with the addition of Deontay Johnson. So now their wide receiver room's looking much more bolstered. Uh, keep in mind, Jonathan Mingo last season was a rookie. I know he didn't cut, catch any touchdown passes, but I think Jonathan Mingo has a very bright future in the NFL, and I think he's going to pair well with Bryce Young, as we saw at various points last season. Uh, but just going out there and getting a solidified wide receiver one in Deontay Johnson, a veteran, a mentor, it's going to just pay dividends across your entire team but especially the wide receiver room adam thielen's coming off a thousand yard season they do need some help at the tight end position but i really think tommy tremble has something and uh, i think we saw a little bit of it last season but i think tommy tremble's got the potential to be their starting tight end but i do anticipate they will bolster that via the draft uh, now defensively this is where everyone was losing my, their minds. And, you know, I said in my first Panthers video a couple of weeks back, their defense wasn't great. And the reason their defense wasn't great is because they put up, what was it, 13.9 points per game last season? Like, folks, they were dead last in the NFL in total yards in the entire season. Uh, the defense was out there for, you know, 40 minutes, right? They're out there for 40 minutes, 40 of the 60 minutes every single game. Obviously, there's going to be some wear and tear. There were unfortunate injuries. Uh, but people were losing their minds at the Brian Bird's trade to the New York Giants. They did get the 39th pick overall in this year's draft in the second round. Uh, but people were losing their minds saying, you know, obviously coulda, woulda, shoulda. You know, maybe you take the two first, the package from, you know, a while back. But, you know, at the end of the day, man, as opposed to paying Brian Burns, uh, they went out there and they picked up a couple of guys, Javon Clowney, Sean Robinson. They just 
gave Derek Brown a huge contract extension. Derek Brown, one of the more underrated defensive players in the entire National Football League. Uh, that extension was rightfully deserved, and the only people really backlashing it were definitely people who didn't watch too many Panthers games. But you know, I understand it—a two and fifteen season. Uh, but I do like the fact that they moved off Brian Burns, even if the trade package wasn't quite there. Uh, they're going to continue to build it in the draft, but I like Derek Brown and Clowney, especially. I think Clowney was a game-changing move. I don't think they're going to be done in free agency. I wouldn't be surprised if they were out and uh, pick up one more player. And we'll talk about that in just a second. So I was reading an article. It was like, you know, bottom 10 wide receiver rooms in the NFL. I think it was Bleach Report. Uh, the thing is, you know, there's a lot of variables that are going into the wide receiver room. Once again, looking back at last season with Adam Thielen and Jonathan Mingo and Marshall, um, the offensive line, 62 sacks. Like he didn't have any time to throw the football at any point in the regular season. So, you know, if your quarterback struggles because your offensive line struggling, obviously your wide receiver room is going to struggle. So they went out there, they made a trade, a great trade with that being said uh, for Deontay Johnson, and he's going to be a game changer. I do anticipate them to pick up a wide receiver in most likely, I think, one of these second round picks that they have. Uh, but I was reading a couple of articles where, you know, they're talking about veteran free agents that they could pick up. Odell Beckham Jr. was one of them. I would only pick up Odell if in one month from now you didn't draft some wide receiver who's going to come like Keon Coleman, you know, out of Florida State. I would only pick up an Odell if you didn't draft a wide receiver who you think is going to come in and produce day one. You know, just digging deeper into the roster, you know, they did pick up David Moore. I'm a little bit worried about Terrace Marshall. You know, he's former, what, 2021 second round pick. No consistency there. We we didn't really see much. I wouldn't be surprised if he was on the roster bubble. They will bolster the wide receiver room. I'm hoping through the draft. In fact, I'm assuming through the draft. Um, I don't hate the Odell Beckham move if they don't pick up a wide receiver in the early second round. Now, running back was interesting because I just saw a mock hypothetical trade where they make a move for Khalil Herbert. Um, I like Chubb Hubbard a lot. I also like Miles Sanders a lot. Miles Sanders had a brutal, desperately bad season. He was on my fantasy football team. It was a nightmare. I had to cut him loose pretty early on in the season. I'm hopeful with Chubba and Miles Sanders running it back for another season. Did see, you know, once again, the Khalil Herbert potential trade would pretty shock me. It would pretty much shock me. I think they'll draft a running back in one of these later rounds. They got a couple of fifth round picks. That's when I think they'll take a running back. So, don't freak out from the 2-15 and 15 record, man. I, I like the new GM. I like the new head coach. I like the culture that they're looking to build and establish. And at the end of the day, all I need to see from Carolina next season, because I know that they've got a revamped O-line, a good defense, good solid defense with intriguing players, I just need to see Bryce Young take a leap. All right? Let me know what you're thinking about this Carolina Panthers team. Give me a confidence rating scale, 1 out of 10, 10 being overly confident. But thank you guys for watching. Have a great rest of your night. We'll see you next